Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for episode number 3 of our FIFA 15 West Ham career mode series. Now as you can see in the background I'll just be leaving the squad report on for you guys including our new signings of course from last ep episode uh, being Atsuto, Uchida and Samuel Umtiti. We'll also be looking to sign another defender this episode as well as looking for a striker. You guys left me some, some, some suggestions uh, for looking at some strikers. Uh, I'll still probably need a few more suggestions. I've had a look at the guys that you wanted and I'll be looking at, to put bids in for those guys uh, but if you've got any striker suggestions uh, for a slightly smaller fee uh, feel free to leave that in the comment section below in the meantime last episode of course we played our first friendlies we actually played uh, the first game against Almeria and we also simmed a game against Bastia of Ligue 1. In this episode I'll be, uh, I'll be showing you some really quick highlights of the Lons game which was the third friendly. I wanted to play it just mainly uh, for practice purposes really uh, because I still need to get used to the team and the such like but I didn't want to bore you guys too much with a ridiculous amount of gameplay from that game in the background because it's only a friendly and it doesn't really matter a huge amount and we will also be playing the first game in the Barclays Premier League against Tottenham Hotspur as well as completing some signings uh, hopefully we'll be looking at some other guys too now here's the first suggestion this is Jurgen Lockadia of PSV the 20 year old striker from the Netherlands we've also got Julian Brandt uh, who we could sign on loan from Bayer Leverkusen a very good uh, 18 year old young winger there also Bakary Sacco from I think Mali is that flag I'm not entirely sure Senegal playing for Wolves and also Yissam uh, ben Yedder or Wissam Ben Yedder even if we do sign him I'll just call him Ben Yedder because Wissam seems like an odd name to me anyway well, that's beyond the point but we are now going to complete a signing that we set up last episode and that is the signing of Jetro Willems one of you guys suggested him last time congratulations to the guy who suggested him because we are going to sign him he was actually someone I was looking at anyway to be fair as a left back uh, strengthening position in terms of a left back and he looked like a pretty good option uh, look at that there six million pounds 20 years of age I can tell you I think he's 72 stat and his potential will be somewhere near 82 with that sort of age and overall at the moment 15 grand as well in wages so not a huge amount uh, we're just going to send our scouts out to a few different places uh, mainly because I actually need to scout Jurgen Lockadier and the scouts are currently busy because none of them are in the Netherlands so we're sending one out to the Netherlands and another one out to Belgium just as a discreet nation really to look for some young players who might not cost a huge amount I've got one in mind already uh, who we might be looking at a little bit later on in terms of a striker but yeah just sending our scout out there to Belgium to look for some young players in general some strikers there too just setting up this scouting instruction though this is the striker uh, scout instruction there as you can see 16 to 26 are uh, their years of age so we're looking for first team quality as well as strong promising and I maybe put pro prolific no just strong and promising uh, so someone who's got a little bit of pace uh, but also got a decent amount of potential too so we're just going to get straight into the first friendly uh, or the third friendly overall this season the first game of this episode this can be quite quick highlights just going to be mainly goals and a few other things that happen in the game uh, anything hugely important that happens because I don't really want to bore you too much I will show you the squad though as it will come up in a moment there you can see Mark Noble leading us out there as captain there in front of uh, our keeper Adrian and also our new signing Willems who started Carl Jenkinson also came into the side from Titi and Reed there our defensive partnership there at centre back Amal Fatano came in for Matthew Jarvis Alex Song replaced Koyate there with still Blensier up front Ravel Morrison and Noble there completing the midfield but early on in the game Amal Fatano comes forward there a bit of a shot blocked there and a massive scramble Amal Fatano is eventually fouled and that gives us a penalty in the 15th minute huge scramble there for Amal Fatano probably should have done a little bit better in the first place but Noble smashes home the penalty in the top left corner to make it 1-0 here against the French Ligue 1 side there, Lons. And it was a pretty good start, 16 minutes gone. Much better start than we had against Almeria. Moving on though, four minutes later, Downing dances through the defence and he makes it 2-0 just four minutes later. Literally, we started off really, really quickly, really, really well. And Stuart Downing there managing to evade the slide tackle of the Lons defender, as you can see there in the replay, and blasts it home past the goalkeeper to make it 2-0 here at home. Uh, Lons were not going to lie down, though. A decent chance there for one of their strikers, Alex Song, then in the second half as well, forcing a save from their goalkeeper. But that is how it would end. 2-0, as you can see there on the screen. A really solid result there against a pretty good team, really. I mean, not not horrendous they're in the they're in the top division of french football but someone we would expect to be beaten as you can see that adrian actually got man of the match there as well some good ratings for amil patano and alex song too so overall i'm pretty happy with how we played in that in that game against lons uh, we pretty much dominated the first half, as you could tell. We obviously scored two goals and made it 2-0 very early on in the game. 
The second half was a lot more even, but certainly feeling as if I'm getting used to the team now. Really liking Ener Valencia. I quite like Amel Fatano, actually. I was pretty much set on not using him whatsoever, but he's certainly a very good player to use, as is Matt Jarvis, as was, you know, as was proved in the first game as well. So I'm really enjoying the attack at the moment. Still going to be looking for that striker, so again, feel free to leave that in the comments section below as a suggestion. Talking of strikers, though, Mauro Zorati is apparently fit and uh, able to return to training. I'm probably not going to select him for the Tottenham game in the starting 11. He'll probably be on the bench just to ease him in quite gently. Uh, but first of all, we're going to look at a few strikers that I found already, and the first of which is going to be the Serbian striker from Anderlecht being Alexander Mitrovic. Now, if you don't know, this guy actually has 85 potential, only 19 years of age, and only 25 grand in wages, so he might be relatively cheap. I don't know, but that question was pretty much answered straight away by uh, Anderlecht giving me a ridiculous amount of money uh, in terms of wanting to get him. I offered some money plus Carlton Cole, and they wanted over £11 million, so I just gave up on that one pretty easily. As you can see, Daniel Potts there, who I probably got his first name wrong in the last episode. Daniel Potts is wanting to start the game against Tottenham because he feels as if he's in good form, and Mauro Zerati is also wanting to start uh, in terms of coming back from his injury. As you can see, though, it is now game day. It's now match day. But just before we get into the game, we're just going to do something quickly, and this is set up an offer for Jürgen Lockerdia, the PSV striker. As you can see in the chief executive comments, it looks as if it might be something like 6.8 million to prize him away, but I'm hoping... Uh, despite putting in this pretty mediocre offer of 2.7 million pounds just to start off with, just to test the water, um, I'm hoping that I can get him for something more like 4.5. I think that's pretty much going to be uh, the minimum, uh, or sorry, the maximum that I can spend, really. I'm looking to probably sell Ricardo Vazte as well uh, and bring in some, some players or sell some players with large wages as well. We're now going to get straight into this Tottenham game. As you can see there, I was just setting up my squad. I'll go through the squad in more depth, but obviously we are now starting the games that hugely matter. The Barclays Premier League starts right here, right now, with this London derby. Obviously something I never experienced uh, with the Aston Villa Karimo was derbies, because Birmingham weren't in the Barclays Premier League. As you can see, here's the squad. Uchida and Umtiti, our new signings, will be playing. Jetro Willems will also be playing at left-back. As you can see in midfield, we've got Song, Noble and Ravel Morrison starting, with Jarvis and Downing as the wing and Valencia up front. Ravel Morrison was another guy who really uh, impressed me in the preseason. But as you can see, we're going to get the first chance here. Just six minutes in. Jarvis there forcing a really good save. One-on-one -on -one there with Hugo Lloris. And another pretty similar chance would occur soon after. Mark Noble playing the ball forward for N.A. Valencia in all kinds of space. Getting away from Kyle Walker. But another magnificent save. You might not have been able to see that. But that was a save from Hugo Lloris. Tottenham then went forward. A goal kick managing to get all the way to Christian Eriksen. Umtiti somehow unable to outstrength him. And thankfully, the Dane managed to blast it over the bar and we don't concede the goal early on. But as you can see, Jarvis was then set away to try and get away from Kyle Walker. He cuts back. Good save from Lloris, but Valencia is there to finish right in the bottom right-hand corner. Really, really nice finish there on the rebound, right in that pocket of space that Hugo Lloris could not get to. And that gave us a surprise 1-0 lead. Unfortunately, though, it would not last. There's a mistake there from our new signing, Samuel Umtiti. That's just me being really rusty on this game. Obviously, I never played FIFA 14 for that long uh, in recent times, and I'm getting used to this game too there but some awful defending for myself and unfortunately Umtiti not getting off to the best start uh, for West Ham and weirdly it would get even worse because despite that being an incredible challenge that was somehow deemed as a red card this was a game changer huge blow for us how you'll see this from the reverse angle I'm not entirely sure how on earth you can possibly give a red card for that he actually not only gets the ball but gets the ball before taking the man. So how that was given as a red card is impossible. The usual EABS there. As you can see here, here is how I change things. Uh, the 5-4-1 diamond formation. Uh, Umtiti there right in the centre obviously wouldn't be playing. Reed and Koyate coming on uh, for Ravel Morrison, who unfortunately uh, didn't play very long in the Barclays Premier League. But as you can see here, we managed to actually get into half-time at one all still level. And we actually had a really good chance uh, to get in front because Stuart Downing wins the ball off the defender. Great save from Lorries. Valencia is onto it. It's blocked and somehow down doesn't score from there. Don't ask me how and why he didn't score that, but now we're under the cosh. As you can see, Paulinho there with the header trickling harmlessly wide, but we were starting to live right on the edge, and unfortunately, we gave away a penalty. Another defender having a mare of a time. This time, Winston Reid, but would Roberto Soldado be able to put it away? No, he would not. He actually chipped it over the bar. We were living hugely dangerously. As I was playing this, I was thinking, right, that's it. We're going to have to just try and score now. Actually, Adrian stayed in the centre of the goal, so he would have got there anyway. And look at how close Tottenham was starting to get hitting the post there. We were living right on the edge and right in 
the last minutes there into injury time. Adrian coming out and punching it clear from the corner. You, I mean, it, we were so under pressure. It was absolutely insane. But somehow there, as you can see, Cheku Koyate, the man who had to come on for Ravel Morrison early on, somehow we managed to hold on. Here are the ratings. Valencia, they're getting a 7.3. Adrian getting a 7 rating too. Uh, unfortunately, Ravel Morrison only getting 5.9, but obviously he didn't play very long. Noble and Downing there, and Jarvis also getting some good ratings, as well as Uchida on his Barclays Premier League debut. But I hope you've enjoyed this episode of West Ham v 15 Karima. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you did. Comment about enjoying it if you enjoyed it that much as well some suggestions for some strikers to buy it's been interesting seeing those uh, new guys getting uh, their debuts in their first games obviously Uchida Umtiti and um, Jetro Willems as well who played very very well but nevertheless it has been an absolute pleasure ranting you guys today have a brilliant day enjoy yourselves and goodbye